Mr. Finkelstein, in 1948, the UN approved the partition of the State of Israel into a Jewish state and an Arab state. Jordan to the west and Egypt to the south had both previously been created and attacked first upon the creation of the State of Israel. Egypt and Jordan had the opportunity between 1948 and 1967 to create a Palestinian state. Why was there not the same response when the region was under Jordanian and Egyptian control? Mm -hmm. You know, I want to just say, uh, uh, young men, I'm not in any way trying to be insulting. I'm way past that. I want to end the conflict, and I want to be reasonable. But it does trouble me, and I want you to think about it. You come here with canned questions. I gave a lecture, you know, I spoke for around an hour, and there was a large amount of material in what I had to say. You don't even listen. You just come in here with a prepared question that has nothing whatsoever to do with what I was speaking about. It's as if I were giving a lecture on particle physics and you were uh, coming here and talking about botany. You don't even listen. You really have to, in my opinion, open your mind and listen. You're not looking at an enemy here. And you shouldn't come in, in my opinion, you shouldn't come in with these canned questions which Hillel gives you or some other organization to prepare you. Listen and think for yourself. And then I think we can make some progress. Think for yourself, where was I unreasonable? What statement of mine was factually untrue? What did I misrepresent? How did I try to pull the wool over the eyes of the audience? I could sit down here now and speak to you at great length about what happened in 1947 and thereafter. But I didn't provide any background material to give an answer to a question like that. I didn't lecture on the topic. It's absolutely meaningless now for me to answer that question. Most people in the room don't even know what you're referring to. I don't understand how you engage in a dialogue that way. Do you want me to start telling you that in 1947, Israel had already struck a deal with Jordan to absorb the West Bank? Do you want me to tell you that Egypt never annexed the Gaza, Israel, uh, Egypt never annexed the Gaza, that between 1947 and 1967, the position of the Arab world was still to restore the rights of the Palestinians to the whole of Palestine? After 1967, when that became an unrealistic demand, the Arab leagues, or well, the Arab countries, beginning in the early 1970s, then in, in uh, concert with the entire international community, uh, came to accept the two-state settlement. And that's the genesis of what we have now today. I could go through the whole history, with all due respect, from well before you were born, I was reading about it. And the number of books I read sometimes, I think, could fill this whole room. It's actually rather depressing. The world is a very big place, and my entire adult life was devoted to learning about one tiny corner of it. But I don't see the purpose of doing that now. First of all, I doubt you even know the scholarly literature on the topic. It's easy to me, for me to make rings around you. I can cite a thousand different resources. I can make you look foolish. I don't see the point of it. Okay. Why don't you listen to what I have to say and answer. With all due respect, it is a very pertinent question. I'm not sure why is it pertinent. Explain to me why it's pertinent. Since 1967, the world has been on a constant onslaught against Israel, stating that they must give back the uh, 1947 um, creation of the state of Palestine. Mm -hmm. Fine. However, in 1947, when the original partition plan had been approved, there was just as much an opportunity to create a second state in the region. Why was there no pressure at that point to follow through with what the 1947 partition stated? Well, I told you why. Up until, from between 1947 and 67, the Arab states did not accept the legitimacy of the state of Israel. And now, now that, as it were, progress has been made, it seems you want to turn the clock back to when they didn't accept. I acknowledge progress has been made. The Arab world, all 22 members of the Arab League, 
have agreed. Now, are you upset by that fact? Would you rather they deny Israel's existence? Would you rather they call for the elimination of the state of Israel? Do you prefer that? I don't understand why. If you're truly interested in resolving the conflict, not looking for pretexts, not looking for excuses, not looking for alibis, it seems to me you would welcome a change of heart, and a change of heart which has now endured for nearly 30 years. That would seem for those who, want to, those who seek a diplomatic settlement, that would seem to me grounds for rejoicing. But if you don't want a diplomatic settlement, if you're looking for all sorts of excuses because you want to steal other people's land, because you want to control their lives, because you want to render their lives so intolerable and so unbearable that they'll finally pack up and leave and go wherever they can. If that's your goal, then yes, more than anything else in the world, you're going to dread the record I've just gone over. Because that record is your big problem. The problem is, for whatever reason, the Arab world, the Palestinians, have expressed a willingness to accept the international consensus and resolve the conflict. And unfortunately, that's what Israel dreads, and that's apparently what you dread, because you don't want to talk about the last 30 years. You want to go back. I could go back too. I can go back and say, well, Israel's top historian now, Benny Morris, he says, quote, that expulsion, what he calls transfer, was built into Zionism. It was built in. It was inevitable. And then he goes and says that the chief motor of Arab resistance to Zionism was the fear of territorial dispossession and territorial dislocation. Well, I ask you, why should the Palestinians have accepted a movement, accepted a movement which, according to Israel's leading historian now, built into it was their expulsion? He says it was inbuilt into Zionism. It was inevitable. It seems to me then the Palestinian position was perfectly reasonable. Does anyone think any country has any people has the responsibility to commit politicide? And they resisted. Why? Exactly what Mara said. The fear of territorial expulsion, territorial dispossession. Ah, that seems to me reasonable. And the Palestinian position was completely reasonable. But time has passed, and now there's a formula available. You have to ask yourself the question, why do Israelis and their, the Israeli government and their alleged supporters, why do they dread that record so much? Why is it I'm talking about 1967 to the present, and you don't want to hear from it. You want to go back to 48. You don't want to hear that the other side is willing to settle. Why don't you want to hear that? I don't understand that. Unless you don't want a settlement, a negotiated settlement. And then the only alternative is to annihilate them.